In my book, I show that there is a distinctive English look to the landscape and also there's a distinctive English character and you can relate the two. And I think we all know this. If you take a flight, say, from Newcastle to Rome and look out of the window, you'll know when you're over England and you'll know when you're over the continent. And I relate to that English look to the English character. Uh, and you could see this extreme English variety in building materials across the country because the geology of England is so varied. So in Suffolk, the houses are largely built out of thatch roofs using the local reeds. The walls are made of cob, which is basically local mud. And that lovely pink colour in the plaster was originally produced by dropping a few drops of ox blood into the mix. And across England there's this great variety. In Cumbria, where we have large slate deposits, there's a wonderful variety of grey-green slates across the county. Um, and one of our most distinctive English features is the chimney, incredible variety of chimneys, most notably at Tudor Hampton Court, where you've got these wonderful barley sugar chimneys with extraordinary lozenged and diamond patterns. And you can see this variety of chimneys, uh, particularly in English countryside, in English villages. And it's funny how we mythologize the English countryside, even though 80% of us live in towns and cities, but the countryside is stitched into our DNA largely because it stayed the same for one and a half thousand years. Village names are still largely Anglo-Saxon. Most villages are five to ten miles apart from each other, as they were when they were founded. And practically every modern village is in the Doomsday Book, i.e. very few new ones have been created. And you can see there are still three distinctive village shapes which go back a thousand years or more. In County Durham you can see the shape laid down by William the Conqueror for defensive villages um, against incursions from the north. Uh, you could diagnose great age in villages across England, in churches on the Welsh borders. The walls of the towers are sometimes eight foot thick because they doubled as uh, defensive towers. And perhaps the most distinctive feature of the English countryside is the English hedge, which can be a thousand years or more old. Um, in the West Country and in Essex and Kent, they can be incredibly ancient. In the Midlands, they tend to be uh, more recent, 18th century, and thinner and straighter. And you can work out the age of those hedges by using something called Hooper's Rule, invented by Dr. Max Hooper in the 70s. And he worked out that if you took a 30-yard stretch of hedge, counted the number of species in that 30 yards, multiplied by 110, you got the age of the hedge. And it's because of an accumulation of details like this, details of history, of geology, of geography, and weather, that England began to look like England, and the English people began to become the English people.